Welcome back everybody to another GB Studio video. If you don't remember what GB Studio is, it lets you create and export Game Boy games, Game Boy Color games, Super Game Boy games, and now Analog Pocket games. It's a visual builder that you don't need any programming to understand or get started. You can also build your game into a HTML5 um, and then play it on itch, for example. So today we're going to be looking at sprites. Obviously, the if you've used GB Studio before in the past, then um, you are familiar with these things here, where um, you have to have 16 by 16 tiles. The bright green is transparent. Uh, to make it animated, then you have to have more than one frame, which uh, extends the file size uh, to the right. Um, and then an, an actor has three uh, 16 by 16 directions. And then uh, in an animated actor, they have uh, two for each direction, but in the sprite editor, we can do whatever we want, basically. Um, and so as you can see here, it's like laid out on a um, large file where there's multiple uh, frames spread out. And I'll show you how you can make your own um, character and animate it and set it up in GB Studio. So first of all, like uh, we saw there, we I've created a massive um, like tiled thing as you know that the tiles in the Game Boy are 8x8 so I've put them like spaced out between each other like this is a head this is the back of the head or a body uh, like we got legs and or arms here you know um, we got swords um, at different angles. GB Studio now basically lets you create your character in engine. When you export your sprite sheet for your character or for any actor in your game you need to export it as a PNG into the assets folder of your project uh, then go into the sprites folder and you put every single every single sprite here. You see how the test character is right here. So I've exported that file and I've put it into the game. Okay, so we're now in the sample project of GB Studio. Uh, as you can see here, this little arrow thing uh, shows you where you begin in the game. Um, it was on the logo, but I've changed it to the sample town, so we just go straight in when we press play, which is up here. Uh, and now if we go to view and we go on sprites, we roll down to test character here, which is that thing you saw. Then you can see I've I've constructed this character out of the pieces that I've, I uh, I made, right? One annoying quirk of GB Studio 3 is that you need to create a new sprite sheet and export that into the file if you want to create a new a new sprite. So as you can see here, my test character has all of this. But if I wanted to create a let's say a female version, I could either put the female version one in here and have another set of states, or I could export another file and it would add to the sprites here. You see that? Um, and so there's no way of just add, like pressing a plus button here and it creating another one, unfortunately. Um, so GB Studio now works with states. So if you were to use Unity, they have a thing called a state machine, um, which basically is like a a huge like list of things that it could be right or like your character could be walking it could be idle it could be attacking it could be holding a sword right so what you have to do is create each of those states and by using pieces like this i am hopefully reducing the amount of tiles i have through all of the animations right so the reason why we want to keep the tiles down is because the Game Boy has a limited amount of tiles that it can use um, because obviously it's such an old uh, piece of hardware, but that's just part of the limitations that make it fun, okay? So uh, the default here, you see we have idle right, which obviously doesn't look like he's facing right, but it doesn't really matter. Idle up, so when the character is facing up, so this is obviously for a top-down game, right? Um, idle down, so when they're facing down, which is basically the same as idle right, just the arm in a different point. Uh, and then so when they're moving right, they kind of look like they got this gorilla stance, which is <laughs> questionable. But as you can see here, there's now frame. If we turn on onion skin, then you can see the other frame behind it. Um, and when we click through them, then... Actually, I think we can press play. Yeah, we can see what this animation looks like. And obviously, it's not that great, but I, I wasn't trying to make it the best thing ever. I'm just trying to show you guys how you can make this. In the state machine, we keep going. If you move up, then we obviously have this one, which is just him doing this. Uh, moving down, just this. So you see here, I've now got sword. So uh, it's the same exact stuff, but now he's holding a sword. Uh, and I'll get to the color and the and the spray placement in a second. But um, you see here, moving right. If you press play, then they're moving right. Moving up, you see. If you press play, then the character's moving up with the sword, and then moving down, moving towards the screen with the sword. And then you see here, attack. So 
when we attack, I want to make it so they lunge. So we've made it so they attack right, they can attack up, and they can attack down. Uh, and that's just very simple animation, right? And as you can see, it's using seven tiles, I think. So that's like the head, the back of the head or the body, and then the two different leg types or whatever. There might be like four in here or something, three here. And then obviously these swords are being used as well. Uh, so that's very simple. Um, but now I'll get into how you actually do it, right? So this head, all I've done is if I remove it by pressing, by just dragging it off, uh, then if I click here, you see it's using two by uh, one. So if I click this and then I click up here, I've now put a head down, right? We now want to change the color, right? I had it with brown hair. So I'm changing it to palette two. And to get this palette, what I've done, as you can see here, it says preview as sample town. So if we go back to the sample town, uh, you can see here it has a list of sprite palettes. And I've changed these one here, this one here to uh, the brown hair. This one has a red body and this one is for the yellow sword. So to change those colors, uh, you have to create the colors. So I just press the plus button. And then when it creates one, I rename it to whatever I want. And I change the colors to the colors I want. Uh, and this color here is the the middle ground color. This one's the lightest color, this one's the darkest. This one on sprites uh, doesn't do anything because there's only three colors on a sprite. The fourth color is used for the transparency. If we go back into the game world, then to change the sprite palette, you just scroll down and you just change it like that. So now if we go back into the sprite, we can even, like I changed that thing there, we can change the head to this color. Uh, imagine we have a state that's called throwing up or something, then <laughs> that's what that looks like. Or maybe frozen. He looks like he's frozen. Then we can uh, make him look like he's frozen by using a different palette. Um, so let's put it back to the hair color. Okay, so that's how you change the color. As you can see, this canvas size is 32 by 24. I did have it as 16 by 24, but when I added the sword, it extended it, um, which is fine. But as you can also see, we can change the size of the collision. So obviously, if your box is too big, it won't be able to get through gaps in your map. Um, but if you shrink it down, then it can get through smaller gaps. And obviously, because it's a top-down game, only the bottom is really the part that's uh, interacting with things. I could even, you know, move it up a bit, scale it down, fit the body a tiny bit more. Um, but that's obviously up to you, and it depends on your game, and you'll obviously want to make sure that you test it properly. To copy the sprite, you have to, you know, click off everything, then go copy frame, and then you can then paste the frame. And as you can see at the bottom here, it's created an extra one. And if I click up here again and press delete, then we're back to the original. Um, but if I wanted to replace the head, I would go replace tile, and then say so here. You see it is now looking like he's facing it away from us. If I do control Z, then it undoes. Uh, and obviously, each of these pieces is, like you can see here, just a piece from uh, the the sprite sheet here. So if I you see these buttons here, I can send it to back or send it to front. Um, I feel like it would be better if we could, you know, send it, you know, one forward, one back. Uh, I'm not sure if it actually does this or not, if it's just sending it right to the back. Uh, but also you can flip, right? You can just flip it. Once you have your states and you have all your little characters and everything, if we go into the game world, as you can see, I've got a trigger box here. To create a trigger box, I've just pressed add and then trigger. And then I can obviously delete that, pressing delete button. Okay, so if we start here, that means we start outside of this box. And what I want to happen is when the player enters the box, they get given a sword. And then they can attack, right? So if we click on the on the box, we have two different uh, tabs here. One that says on enter and one that says on leave. So obviously when you enter the trigger, whatever I've put here will play. And when we leave the trigger, then whatever I put here will play. So if we go back to on enter, because we want to trigger, we want to pick up a sword when we, um, when we start. So obviously that's the reason why I have the sword in the character thing, right? Um, so as you can see here, we're setting the state. So we're setting the state to sword. As you can see, there's also other ones which um, I haven't set up. Obviously, I've got, I've got default, I've got attack, and I've got sword. Um, the open and explode ones, I think they're just the basic ones that come with every single thing. Um, I'm not sure why they need to be here, but they are. 
uh, and you press sword so that means we now be, would be holding the sword uh, and then we have an attach script to button so when I press A the player's animation state would then be set to attack so it's that one where they're lunging with the sword and then we got here launch projectile and I've got it so the lifetime of it is 0 0.1 it has no offset but it goes in the direction that the player is facing um, the speed I can maybe set to one or two um, and then this collision group thing is is based on um, what you will set up your enemies as having which I won't be doing in this video uh, and then we have a little wait timer here so that there is time for the um, you know the attack state to be seen on screen and then it will be set back to the sword state so what happens is when we go through the when you go into the box we look like we have a sword and we get given the functionality of the button right the button if you close it and open it you can see it's all with contained within on press here so when we press the a button all of this happens see it says on press here uh, and that makes it very easy for us to simply look like we're attacking it doesn't mean it will work and work and attack and kill people but that is how it makes we make it look like it works right um, it will be using the uh, collision groups and stuff in a different video and I've actually made videos on it before if you haven't seen uh, any of my videos before but um, the collision groups and the enemies is where the functionality actually comes in so if we press play we can now see what happens when we do this to get your character to instantly start as the character we've just created you see here I'm in the settings and I'm at default player sprites and I'm, I've changed the top down 2d to the test character the reason why I've done that is that this scene is a top-down 2D scene. You see here the type is top-down 2D. But if we wanted to uh, change it again, say let's say uh, we wanted to play as a different character, then on the initiate of the scene, you see here we have uh, currently does a menu and it would play the music if I didn't disable it. What we want to do is add an event here and go into the actor here and then we want to set the player um, player sprite sheet here so what that does is means the player sprite sheet would then be changed to for example the player um, here which is the original one that the game started with well, the sample project had um, but obviously I'm not going to do that I'm going to uh, click on there and press delete event so that um, just how I've set it up into the settings here will work right so my test character will will be there when I press play so if I go into build and run, we can see what's happening. Um, and obviously most of this won't make any sense to you. Um, and I have found that my first time uh, loading GB Studio free up, it did uh, like didn't work. So I closed it and reopened it and it did work. Uh, there's also an update so you can get f z uh, version 3.0.1, I think, which is a bug fix for a couple of things that meant it didn't work and also didn't save the music when you're uh, working on it. So I recommend downloading the latest version of GB Studio to make sure you get that. Uh, and remember you can get that from the GB Studio itch page here um, where it has all the information as well. And the first time you build a game it will take uh, significantly longer than after you've done it once. Um, the reason is it has to you see compile every single thing and uh, prepare everything but if, as long as you don't close it and reopen it, then um, it won't take as long the second time. Okay, so here we have the game. Uh, it's in this tiny little window here. I can make it bigger for you. So as you can see, the game has put us where uh, the arrow was at the beginning of the game. Uh, and when we move around, we animate like the animations I put in the game. And obviously, to, to make this look better, I would have more animation frames. And a faster animation speed you know to make it look smoother uh, and I also probably would redesign the way I'm doing this obviously I'm just using pieces to kind of create something uh, and I feel like if we had like a gorilla or something that kind of would look awesome like the way the hands you know when they're going sideways are like almost touching the floor I feel like that's actually inspired me slightly which is kind of cool uh, but remember we have a trigger here uh, you can't see triggers when you're playing so if we enter the trigger as you can see we've now got a sword and we move around like we normally do um, but now we have a sword in our hand um, and as you can see when we're moving right one of the frames is using the wrong palette on the sword which is obviously us 
a mistake, but it's also uh, fine. But it also does show you that you can change the colors mid, um, you know, mid frame, right? So you can you can give your characters eight times three different colors in their sprites. I haven't tested that, so I'm not actually sure if it will work, but I'm I can imagine it will. But that is awesome that that is possible. It was not possible in GB Studio 2, so that's an awesome upgrade. And so I've made it so when we press A, which obviously on the keyboard it's uh, Z, um, we attack. And the attack is like a like a fireball or something, um, which I would obviously change to be an in invisible um, sprite in the if I was to make an actual game. Um, and as you can see, the attack is going to the left when I'm facing left, right when I'm facing right, down when I'm facing down, and up when I'm facing up. Um, but I... I do question, you know, the f <laughs> how good it looks, and obviously, hopefully the attack itself is um, solid enough. So if I go down here into the lifetime, actually the wait, obviously I feel like the time it's actually looking like it's attacking is too short. So if I up that, I could also change the sprite sheet here to maybe the explode thing. Um, I would want to create my own... Um, sprite sheet with the um, with the correct uh, looking thing on it. But for testing purposes, anything is fine. So if I press play again, we will see those changes in action. Okay, so here we go again. We're in the in the game again. When we enter here, we get the sword, and then when we attack, it's now on screen for longer. And the actual attack thing is. You see it's like uh, just white, I think, so it's harder to see on the uh, background. Let's see if I can do that. There we go, yeah. So you can see it's white, and on the white ground, it doesn't really show. So um, obviously it's a sword, so it's not meant to have anything. Um, so I would just make a, a sprite sheet with just the green. But that is how you set up your character to animate while it's walking and have different states that you can trigger by using the um, the... The player set animation state to attack. Obviously, if you want to add more, then you would just add event here. And then, for example, maybe display dialogue. I'll put that up. Okay, so as you can see, I've just taken... I've just put a display dialogue here, and I can say... You found a sword. And then, so when we pick... When we get the sword, when we go into this, um, we'll get given the sword, and then it says, You found a sword. And then we can now press A, and it will attack. And there we go. You found a sword, and we can attack. So I hope that has given you guys a good uh, idea of of what you can do with the new states and sprite editor in GB Studio. And I hope uh, you can make some awesome games with this. Um, I will be obviously making more tutorials. So I'll just put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. Remember to like the video if you liked the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Remember to comment on what you want to see next and what you thought of this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, guys.